good evening to one and all present here and uh, welcome to yet another uh, webinar of iep south zone on evidence based practice in physiotherapy myths and uh, ignore aspects uh, we have uh, wonderful people here uh, we have a great personality for our chief guest dr supriya k vinod so a strong leader a woman leader and uh, not flexible always fighting for the profession so thank you madam for uh, joining us and uh, we have dr arunachalam ramachandran again a able researcher and uh, has done a lot of contributions to research and uh, dr uh, parth trivedi he is again a, a wonderful speaker na known all over the country for his uh, uh, research and also for his uh, teaching so thank you all for joining us and uh, i take this opportunity to request dr c k sendil kumar sir the joint secretary of cec south zone to deliver the welcome address this is a lot good, good afternoon everyone may god bless you all i take this opportunity welcoming you all i bring greetings from our honorable president dr sanjeev ja our general secretary arna anamale sir and our treasurer ruchi madam and the vice president reddy sir it is nice to welcome you all and our today's chief guest supriya madam i know since decades i can say very smart and uh, what is a a person who is will be able flexible for pro, for pro, what is a colleagues non flexible for non profs who are against the profession so that's what i mean to say as i notice there uh, what is it and whenever we say she never said no for anything which is good for our profession and uh, very lovely lady I think he got. Sir, are you able to hear? Ah, yes, sir. Now you are able to hear, sir. Our our moder today's moderator, Trivedi sir, known person all over in our profession, and a very busy schedule. We have taken the responsibility of moderating our South Zone webinar. We are so happy to receive you over here, and uh, your presence makes this webinar another one milestone for our profession, and because the South. i think what is it your name was much familiar through the webinars we welcome you sir and today speaker our arunachalam sir son of sail you can say but <laughs> who was known globally was been what is it admired globally and today we got an opportunity to listen from you sir a wonderful speaker who come for iap south zone we welcome you and our technical support what is it iap wc the gem of the people i can say that till date all the webinars what they have done it is wonderful and the best i thank sumita madam and shanti madam ruchi madam for taking the responsibility and support giving shoulder for us in all our milestones and i welcome all the participants and i i welcome all cc members who are there for this thank you and welcome you all for this iap south zone webinar of today's topic evidence based practice thank you may god bless you all thank you thank you thank you very much sir now i request uh, our honorable sir, sir, yes sir now i request our honorable uh, chief guest uh, dr uh, supriya madam so she is a professor and principal college of physiotherapy mother teresa pg research institute pondicherry and she is again the president of the state of pondicherry iap and uh, she is also again uh, an active member uh, of uh, wc women's cell 
so let us now hear from madam and uh, because of uh, all these strong pillars i think iap will is able to march in a better platform and is able to do good things uh, now we'll hear it from madam a very uh, good evening to all the stalwarts here in this uh, platform under the ages of the national iap uh, the iap south zone is organizing uh, not only this but many programs in the last uh, uh, month period uh, you can uh, find that they've been coming out with a marathon of programs and each is a gem or a crown to the uh, feather and the cap for the south zone so uh, this moment i take to thank uh, ck sandil kumar sir and uh, dr rajan uh, samuel uh, and also dr anjani who are uh, the pillars behind this uh, south zones uh, or organizing programs and also to the iip women cell who have been uh, supportive to the south zone for uh, making this a reality all the girls there behind screen hats off to you women cell and uh, the speaker for today uh, i congratulate him and uh, best wishes to you because uh, even dr aruna chalam i know him for some time he has uh, officiated many times uh, for as an examiner for the pondicherry university for neurology and dr parth trivedi the moderator of the session uh, whom i came to know only yesterday evening since i was also a participant for one of his uh, uh, tele webinars on uh, a wonderful session on uh, virtual reality I, and i open up for me too so uh, thank you to the entire organizing team for giving me this opportunity to officiate here as chief guest i don't uh, believe in the word chief i believe that we are all uh, guests here and uh, a part and parcel of the south zone so it's a proud moment and a privilege to be here officiating uh, in this wonderful platform i thank you all and uh, about this topic on uh, myths and ignored aspects uh, the much uh, needed topic there have been many webinars which i have seen on uh, evidence based practice but this one uh, very uh, specifically it is mentioned as myths and ignored aspects that is what is uh, more catchy because today we find that in a world where there is a globally and nationally a platform of so many techniques it's a rampant uh, you know a stage there where you have so many techniques where the youngsters as well as those who are practicing right now do not know which is the ideal one that they should pick up so when you have your platter full it is very essential that we need to have the intelligence and the discretion to select what is essential for you and learning is a never ending process as a teacher as an academician i've been into the teaching for more than 25 years now and i am very happy to say that uh, uh, this uh, platform is going to be a very a very very essential one for uh, all the people who are here whether it is scholars pg students or teachers or uh, clinicians to take uh, away a message from the uh, eminent speaker here dr arunachala yeah i have uh, you know i don't wouldn't want to um, overestimate or underestimate anybody so uh, you will find that every word that i spoke here is true at the end of the session because you are definitely going to get a different uh, perspective on what uh, evidence based practices it may be evidence based practice or practice based evidence whatever it is it is an integration of three essential uh, components it is evidence it is the patient values and also the um, uh, you know the excellence or the uh, uh, excellence that you show in picking up the best uh, uh, practice necessary for bringing vital changes in your patient's condition so with these few words opening words i uh, think i won't take much of the time precious time that we need to give to our moderator and the speaker so thank you once again to everybody who has uh, made this a reality for me here being here as a guest very very happy to be here thank you thank you madam thank you thank you very much madam like uh, for your motivating words i think uh, the this type of encouragement is very very supportive uh, and uh, with this i think uh, iap south zone and the total iap can do a lot of things for the professionals and uh, now it's time for introduction of the speaker but uh, yeah i'm supposed to do the introduction of the speaker but before that i'll just give a very few uh, uh, note about the, our moderator and then go to the speaker So our moderator, Dr. Pa Pat Tirvedi, is a lecturer in C M uh, Patel College of Physiotherapy, Gandhi Nagar, and he is an academic editor in an international journal. He is a reviewer in an international journal. He is a part of an editorial board member, and uh, he has received Young Achiever Award from 
uh, AIMS, uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences uh, in 2017. And he is also a recipient of uh, Young Researcher Award. So I think uh, uh, I just want to tell you this because like uh, we have uh, real people who have contributed to a lot to research and then uh, uh, and who has really pro proven themselves. And uh, now it is uh, time for my speaker introduction. That's because like uh, our speaker, he has got so many achievements. Like uh, I, I was not able to read it out. So I, I prepared a, a, a screen for him. So that probably like, uh, so I hope you are able to see the screen. Okay. Dr. Arna Chilam is a professor and principal of College of Physiotherapy, Madhav University, Rajasthan. He is the first international guide for PhD and MPhil program at General Sir John Kotevela Defense University, Sri Lanka. He is a guest lecturer for National Academy of Customs and Indirect Taxes and Narcotics, uh, peer reviewer and uh, journal selection assistant in Enago publications. Uh, he did, he has a history of his bachelor, master. I don't want to uh, tell all that because it, it, it is consuming a lot of time. He's, uh, he has done his PhD from Savita University. He has MSc in yoga and natural therapy. Uh, he is, again has a postgraduate diploma in yoga and naturopathy. He's a doctorate in acupuncture too. And he's a PG diploma in diabetic education. And he's a postgraduate, has a postgraduate diploma in Verma and Tokenum Sciences. And he's a certified medical content writer, Henry Harbin University. And he had designed trunk dissociation retrainer, first of its kind, used for trunk rehabilitation in stroke. He was awarded the uh, Ayurveda Seva Ratna for best contribution to Ayurvedic medical sciences. And he has received best researcher award from Indian Association of Physiotherapists in the year 2018. He has also received best physiotherapist award uh, from JKK College during their Silver Jubilee. He's a coordinator for ISO standardization and, and qualified for internal auditor and a principal investigator and co-author in several commendable research publications. So with, a, with all this uh, short, brief uh, information about a great man, so uh, I think now I request the speaker to take up the platform and Dr. Arnachalam, now it is all yours and all the participants are now waiting for you to uh, listen what you're going to say about evidence-based practice. Thank you. Dr. Arnachalam, I are you there? Uh, yeah, yes, fine. you are not audible I think uh, I think you have to check your microphone probably sir am I audible now yeah now you are yeah it's yeah, clear. yeah. It's clear. I'm very sorry um, so totally humbled and flattened by the uh, introduction given by Rajan Samuel, sir, such a legendary person. Um, and I'm so happy to be part of this uh, uh, team of uh, Indian Association of Physiotherapy South Zone. My first respect to uh, the torch bearers of uh, the profession, Dr. Sanjay Jha, sir, and uh, Dr. Anamalai, sir, though they're uh, not present. So I would like to give my respect to them. Next. Uh, Rajan, our own Rajan Samuel, sir, and C.K. Chendil, sir, 
um, the efforts what both of you are uh, under, uh, um, taking now is going to our profession to next level. The chief guest, uh, Supriya Madam, and my dear uh, Path Trivedi, uh, who, who is a like-minded person, and uh, he uh, accepted to uh, participate in this as a moderator. Uh, with Supriya Madam, I always have a lot of respect, and we, uh, she was always encouraging for me. I am so junior to all uh, uh, the uh, three uh, legendary people on the screen. So with uh, due respect, I would like to start the presentation, sir. So today's presentation is going to be like, uh, what are the myths and ignored aspects of uh, evidence-based practice in physiotherapy? I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to say no. Before that, I want to know your response. So I'm going to go on a polling. Um, I would like all the participants to just spare a few moments, go to uh, Google, just type gosoapbox.com and type this keyword. Once you enter into gosoapbox.com, you will find enter into polling. So please enter into the polling. And it will be asking you for a keyword. So please type this number 307-693-341. It will ask for your name. Please give your name. So once you go into gosoapbox.com, you will find a join events bar sign in. So go to join events. So once you go in, you will find a access code box. You have to type the access code. And I have some two questions for you. So please answer the two questions. It is of a multiple choice question. Whichever comes to your mind at first, it just flashes in your mind, just click that. Because if you think too much into that, you cannot answer anything. So I see 27 people online. That's a great thing. And you have started voting. So I am getting, please don't go for I am confused. Just click I am getting it. If you are confused, please ask me what is the thing in the chat box. I will answer you. You will have two options on right on top. I am getting it or I am confused. So if you say you are confused, that means you have some problem. I see only 32 people online out of 136 participants. Please try to put your finger on it. It is somewhat like voting. I have asked two questions. What are the barriers in using evidence-based practice in physiotherapy? Because right now we are in a stage where we just preach evidence-based practice and we have not started practicing it. So what are the barriers as a physiotherapist you face? Because whatever you say will be the final say. You can see my I'm getting all the so almost 20 people have voted. We will give two more minutes. So I want all the participants to go to gosoapbox.com. And for the new participants, please go to gosoapbox.com and try to type this number, what you're seeing on the screen, 307-693-341. So I think 30 members have already voted, 33, 34. 
So the next question, what I've asked is physiotherapists should practice based on whether they should practice based on the expertise, what they have or conventional values and whatever the patient likes, the values of the patients or purely based on evidence or combining all the three. I think we have got a very good crowd uh, today. The audience are very knowledgeable. I think they are uh, hitting the bullseye right on top. I'll, I'll finally, at the end of this presentation, I will compare uh, what the audience have uh, voted and what the previous session, I had one, uh, one more session similar to this, what they have voted. Okay, meanwhile, uh, people who have not finished, you can continue. So why I'm asking you to vote for this is, if enough number of people or uh, uh, the considerable number of people say something or think something, that must be true. That is what we think, right? That is everybody says the same thing. That is what we say that then that should be true. That is what uh, normally we perceive. Uh, but there is a lot of difference between that. We normally, uh, I'll give you an example. We normally say I'm doing a study instead of uh, saying I'm doing a research. Both of them are same or not. Conventionally, people say this. So we also use it, but it's entirely different. Study is nothing but knowing, which is already there. You're just going through that. It's a process of knowing studying is different. And research is creating knowledge. We are going to create some new thing, but we'd interchangeably use it because many people use it. So there is a lot of controversies whether to use the um, evidence-based practice or not to use evidence-based practice because there are a lot of practical difficulties in doing so and we don't know from where to start. So we trust in God, but do we need data for that? We don't need data for that. But I'll tell you if medicine is going to be the God and I would like to be an atheist, I would like to find evidence for each and everything before I go. I may sound little rude, but the definition uh, goes in such a manner that you have to uh, really depend on that. So what does the definition says? According to World Conference of Physiotherapy in 1996, commitment to use the best available evidence. So we are committing ourselves as a professional to use the best available evidence rather than following the myths and the conventional practice to inform decision making process about the in, decision making process is there in every part of our assessment to treatment to prognosis. So in this every area of decision making, if you're going to use the best available evidence for you, then that is nothing but the uh, evidence based practice in physiotherapy. Um, remind you, uh, the Archie Cochrane was the first person to start with this for effectiveness and efficacy. So there is a lot of difference between effectiveness and efficacy. That's why I hardly find it very uh, confusing to use this word in front of the research, finding the effectiveness or, or finding the efficacy of any intervention. So uh, she, uh, after her name only, the Cochrane database is currently functioning. So I think uh, you all have completed the uh, good amount of voting. So I'll take that voting and we will see how it has gone by. So. For this question, physiotherapy should practice based on most of you have ordered that combining perspectives of a patient, therapist and evidence. All the three um, is evidence based practice. Maybe Supriya ma'am has given the clue for that and she has almost uh, uh, released the key of the uh, uh, content. That's good. But if you all are aware of this, then I'm very happy for that. The next question, what I asked is, what are the barriers? This is very important. That is what I want to touch today very hardly. So lack of time is 18% of the people have said, I don't have time. Lack of intent to change, 20%. Lack of learning habits, 22%. Practical issues like referrals, income loss, etc., is 37%. I am already producing successful results is 4%. So I'm happy that people are not overconfident in uh, clicking the last co column saying that I am already successful. Once you feel contented with your service, what you're doing to patients, I don't see you have any need for. Okay, so it is distributed. I will say this result as a distributed result, what I've got from this survey. So 
I would like all of you to vote again at the end of this session after the session is over and I would like to see whether I have created any change in your attitude towards um, evidence based practice. Okay, so most of you have said no, uh, the time is not there for me. So where to change from uh, if you ask me why there is a problem for you in adopting um, evidence based practices. I don't know from where to start. So I have a lot of articles there. I have a lot of conventional practice on one side. I have myself standing in between that where to start with. So I would like to suggest you certain things. So from where you have to start, you have to start right from your assessment. So how you go with assessment assessment is itself is a research. The subjective assessment what you do on patients will give you an idea about what might be this patient is suffering with. So that is called as the hypothesis. So you should have a hypothesis or two hypotheses after the subject to examination. So this hypothesis is going to be verified and confirmed that this is the condition what I perceived through objective examination. Subjective examination, you can ask any number of questions, any uh, hierarchical questions, but objective examination, you have a stipulated set of questions. These questions or uh, procedures which you are going to do on the patients are going to be based upon your hypothesis and based upon your objective examination you are going to finally do a physical diagnosis so here there is research involved you agree or not because everywhere you have decision making whenever it comes to decision making your research comes into play after you do a physical diagnosis what it is it is your problem list you are going to devise certain problem list the chief complaints is in the patient's language and problem list is going to be in a therapist language. So based upon this problem list only you're going to place your goals. In goals you're going to give time limit for everything. That is why we are uh, treating is different. Treating at the appropriate time is very uh, important. I can show results in one month. I can show results in two months. I can show results in one year. Once a physiotherapist told me I'm so talented in treating stroke patients. Uh, a patient uh, whom I have been treating is always with me for the last two years. He has not the physiotherapist at all. I'm taking care of him. I have gained his uh, confidence. Do you say this fellow is uh, con uh, confident or he is successful? No, he's not because he is not able to show results for two years. He's continuing patient. If, uh, had it been an uh, efficient test, he should six months when the neuroplasticity is at peak. So providing results in timely duration is very important. So here all areas you're going to plan the treatment plan. You have a lot of gadgets as Supriyam I'm told. You have a lot of gadgets now. You have n number of uh, treatment procedures. non-conformities that means they are minimal they are very less in numbers whereas if you see who are practicing the convention and based upon experience and based upon the pseudosciences are majority so that's why there is a clash between these two things so when everybody tries to become a conformities then this situation will be like whoever is practicing the pseudoscience will become a different entity so the intent to change should be the first thing what i would like to um, tell. So who does not practice people who are aged? There are a lot of uh, disadvantages with people who are aged. I don't say that age is a disadvantage for them, but right from the career, their curriculum wise, their um, practice wise, they have a lot of flaws that we are going to see later. People who are aged, this scenario is in abroad, okay, the, where it was done. They are not practicing uh, uh, evidence-based practice because either the background or they're not ready to change. Next, lack of patient treatment time. People who do not have the uh, time to spend with patient who are 
having n number of patients and less human resources, they all won't participate in uh, evidence-based practice because they don't have time to spend with the patient. So they, they will not have time to go to the literature and search for anything and come back with evidence. Where there is no bridge between the academician, clinician and research. This is what is a major problem in India, the Indian curriculum system. That is a problem because there is a set of people who teach physiotherapy. There are a set of clinical instructors uh, when the student goes to the physiotherapy department. And there are people who are sitting separately and doing research. There is no integrity between these, these three things. So once there is an integrity between these three people, once these three people sit together and talk, then only there will be a lot of uh, changes that will be happening in our field. Example, you imagine people sitting in the university are doing a lot of research on certain topics using their students. And they are also coming up with their personal projects. How far this is reaching to the clinicians who are in the field, who have done just BPT, they are practicing successfully. They are not able to know because one thing, these people who are doing this research are not globalizing their thought. That is communicating their research to the entire world by means of publication uh, in a standard journal. And the clinicians also do not have an idea about how to refer to journals, how to read the journals and hardly they have the habit of reading journals. Touch your heart and tell me how many articles you read per week. If you are reading at least one article per week, I'm happy. That is an intent you show towards changing. Unless otherwise you update your knowledge about research statistics and how physiology and anatomy behaves with these things. This is not going to happen. This uh, evidence-based practice is not going to happen because evidence-based practice is uh, anti, it's big entity beyond research. Beyond comprehending research, you should be very strong in your basics. Then only you can climb up the ladder one by one. So there should be a clear correlation and a synchronized voice from the academicians, clinicians and the researchers. Then only this is possible. Otherwise, this is a long distance dream for us. And confidence level of individual physiotherapist, clinical therapist to conduct research. If I ask on a visual analog scale, how are you confident in doing a research at your clinic individually? You can rate yourself and based upon that only the change is going to happen. Unless otherwise everybody is going to come into 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, in the numerical rating scale. This is not going to happen because research has to happen in the place where they should be running on research. When I say research, you should not think we are mask and uh, going with microscopes and all these things. It's very functional and basic research, community based research, uh, research which analyze the prevalence of study uh, disease, analyze how the disease behaves, analyze how the results are very simple in three terms. Okay, so these are the basic research which has to happen in clinics. And this is not just what I'm saying. It was said by Bridges PH in, uh, from Health Service Research. Because whenever you're presenting something, you should have references. That is also part of evidence-based practice. Next is a study which was done in 2003. What is the difference between the aged and the youngsters? What are the uh, uh, pros and cons of being an young and aged? The first thing is, the aged are deprived of training in appraisal of articles because those days when we studied, uh, we were not able to analyze or we, we, we did not have the scope to learn about article appraisal. Uh, 20 times the youngsters are more beneficial and they are uh, fortunate to learn how to critically appraise articles. And the technology is very important thing. Now the youngsters are just like that able to access to the technology and they are able to adapt themselves to the technology. They are able to go in quest of technology. They are acquiring a lot of knowledge, but the aged people have a barrier. One thing is their brain level and their cognitive level is slowly uh, deteriorating. I, nothing to take away from the aged people, but I'm just saying new acquisition of skills is not going to be as uh, effective as compared to youngsters. So these youngsters can approach to any gadgets very immediately and they're able to incorporate that in the studies. If Supriyam Mem said that uh, Parth is very effective in presenting virtual reality because he's young, the topic is also related to uh, technology. 
rather than people uh, who are aged speaking about a virtual reality dr parth is able to speak because he is young he is able to understand the technology and he is able to use the terminologies better and last but not least the aged people are deprived of a particular curriculum which has put out, put them down very badly so the curriculum do not have the research methodology those days they did not have bio statistics those days so whatever they are coming across now is very new to them they have to acquire all the knowledge and this is why it is very tough for the aged people to practice um, evidence based when i say this you should not think that people who talk about evidence based practice and who practice evidence are superior and they are very knowledgeable and they can show off like anything there is nothing like that they are a separate people of people producing success based upon evidence and these are separate Uh, group of people who produce success based upon experience if you see anything and everything very deeply and who uh, practice their based upon their own uh, uh, ideologies will always have a connection with the research the research will say the same thing what these people have evolved through experience if it is true knowledge so next uh, what are the barriers in engagement of uh, evidence based practice we'll see the global scenario the first and foremost thing is insufficient time to con uh, consult the literature they don't have time and to go and search for the literature that is the one which stands very tall followed by the tendency to follow the generally accepted clinical practice in my department so my department has a set of thing if a patient comes with low back pain you have to give uh, traction and ift followed by 3 days or 4 days after if the patient reduces with pain i am going to teach him exercise so right away i cannot teach him exercise but what the evidence says you can start moving the patient's body because the rest is not going to reduce pain anymore so that is what evidence says but my department has a separate type of uh, practice so i cannot do that and the third very important tall criteria is difficulty to access resource from my trust maybe this this may not be true now because we have lot of uh, access to many uh, studies but we are staying away from them next is uh, what is the motivating factor for engaging with uh, evidence based practice the first is understand how clinical decision making is made i want to understand at various points of time how this decision making is going to help me in treating better so then i will definitely go into research so this is what is happening in this covid scenario now people are listening to many stalwarts uh, from the field of physiotherapy coming to their home step very easily very easily they are able to approach them so they get lot of motivation they get this idea of uh, how to use evidence based practice and how to become so renowned like people so this is what i wanted to tell you education educating the people about the need for evidence based practice is the first step and you cannot start from physiotherapist you have to start from the doctor who is referring the physiotherapy for patients uh, to physiotherapist even if i am a first visit i claim as a first visit practitioner i am practicing okay 50% of patient comes to me with uh, direct referral uh, without any referrals from the uh, doctor but 50% come from doctors so if the doctor writes 10 days of ift and i am supposed to give 10 days of ift i'm uh, and the pathetic scenario is i am not uh, i am not supposed to do anything beyond that because the confidence level of physiotherapist is not high now in the current scenario if it is an experienced therapist he will convince the patient saying that see this is not going to happen i will give you a separate treatment and he'll be able to come out with his own experience but youngsters they have to follow the guidelines what the uh, doctor <coughs> so from where we have to start we have to start from educating the uh, orthopedicians um by means of some platform uh, which can be created by iap in the future where we have to tell as a community to these referring doctors that please do not give us guidelines to what to practice we have some set of uh, uh, evidence base from which we can treat your patient successfully ultimately what is the goal your patient success is the goal rather than it is between you or me who is producing results okay so uh, the first thing is if you have the curiosity to understand how to make decisions you will definitely go into evidence based practice and the next thing is the routine practice is very uh, uh, killing you uh, you are not producing results with your uh, routine practice means then you will definitely go for thing next coming to the core topic this everybody will educate you 
but I am just going to run through these slides very fast because we have a number of things to deal. So what is evidence-based practice is all about? It is not only the evidence we are going to practice. It is the basics which the evidence is the base for everything. About this, what are the things? Your personal experience and the patient uh, per, um, viewpoint is also important. I had an interview with a famous sports physiotherapist a few days back. I asked him why you practice this taping still because uh, taping is not going to be useful. It is already proved by uh, the Olympic Association where your uh, McConnell taping is not going to be effective. What answer he gave me, you know, if I don't put this tape on this uh, athlete, he's not going to step into the field because it is his mind which plays in that particular area. My injured area is trapped nicely so I can perform and that limbic attitude, that limbic system, the emotion is going to carry him and he's going to win. For me, he winning is more important than practicing evidence in that particular area. So the patient perspective is very important. He even told me that people like Karan Pollard and Hardik Pandya, they use only pink color tape because that is very psychologically and uh, uh, they are very happy with wearing a pink color tape when they are, because they might have taken five wickets or had a hundred with that particular pink tape. So they are very specific about things. So you have to give uh, the idea to patients. You cannot go and educate a Hardik Pandya or a Pollard uh, in the dressing room saying that, see, this is not evidence. I should not practice all these things. Okay. So, giving due respect to patients needs and at the same time your experience along with the research evidence that is available forms the basis for evidence-based practice. It is not only based upon the researchers. So there are five steps which are involved in uh, doing um, evidence-based practice. First is the formulating an answerable question, looking for an already available answer for that. And I have put it in a different way. I have my own way of uh, telling people that you cannot formulate an answerable research question right away. If I ask you, do you have any answerable uh, questions, research question, you cannot come up with the question. So what I normally do is first step is a research problem. You should identify a research problem. So how to start with evidence-based practice right now, I will advise young therapists who are there in this presentation to take every patient step by step. If you have a periarthritis shoulder, uh, you have uh, anterior capsulitis with uh, having a restricted range of motion and pain, take him as a research problem. If you have a stroke patient with hand function disability, you might be thinking all other things have record in this patient. Why not his hand, uh, which is the thing which is not recovered? So that is the research problem. The research problem can come from assessment or to have a case presentation with your formal team of people or a non-formal friend you might be discussing with your peers and colleagues about a condition there also you will get some research problem or if you are attending a very interactive class a teacher will tell you something and he'll make you interact with him then you'll also get some ideas about the uh, things when you're discussing with your guide, very importantly, uh, you will get a lot of ideas. But normally in Indian scenario, the guide would be a major problem, research problem for them for completing the study on a lighter vein. So when you discuss with your seniors, you will also get some lot of research ideas. And reading research articles, that is what I wanted to tell you. You have to make this as a, a habit. You have to read some articles. From articles, you will find a lot of controversies. You will have some further recommendations from every research at the last of the discussion. You will have further recommendation. The researcher might have given you an idea. What else can be done in future? And the intervention ideas from some study results. The other study results might be giving you an idea. This is used in adult hemiplegia. Why can't I use it in pediatric uh, hemiplegic patients? So, so these are all the uh, very important things from where you will get uh, uh, research problems. Okay, because the problems are abundant. It is only the therapist who has to go for it. Recently, I, I read an article where uh, positioning of a patient in sitting in a Western toilet uh, was discussed elaborately. It's a very basic thing. It's a community-based uh, study where he said rather than sitting in 90 degrees, sitting in 35 degrees uh, resulted in a better comfort for the patient to breathe easily and to uh, overcome the constipation associated with elderly. 
so this gives a clear uh, this gives an idea so this is what an indian posture indian toilet is also all about so why not i compare the comfort levels of an indian toilet and for a 35 degree posture when i presented this in the previous uh, seminar someone came with me answer sir what happens if uh, the patient is having an osteoarthritis of hip or knee this will be very difficult for him to uh, overcome that then that becomes a research problem i told that student see this is a research problem if this is the position of comfort for constipation what is the uh, scenario of patient who is having knee osteoarthritis or hip osteoarthritis with limited range of motions or discomfort can you recommend this 35 degree posture or you are going to come up with some other advice so this research should go to the public the public should follow that then only there is a value of doing this research and this is how you get a lot of research problems when you read some books some good books really you will have a lot of research problems when you are reading through some uh, theories which are already proved uh, yeah, uh, people like bob uh, car and shepherd mulligan maitland all these things you will come across a lot of doubts in your mind this guy has said this thing and this guy has said this thing what what is the conflicting ideas between these two how am i going to practice that in my day to day endeavors all these uh, doubts will come up and very importantly anything and everything that comes as advanced physiotherapy and new physiotherapy new avenue please in facebook don't go and ask what is the cost of this because i recently saw this particular equipment which is called some physio gun or something like that i don't know who gave this name but this is called physio gun and i see lot of physiotherapists going and asking what is the cost of it please don't ask what is the cost of it please ask him what is the physiology of this ask him whether already articles are published on this whether it is uh, effective uh, proved effective or not because i am going to use it on my patients and my credibility matters there anything and everything which is coming new and uh, uh, techno in the name of technology advancement we cannot incorporate okay so uh, advanced physiotherapy should always be questioned next is whenever you are seeing some peculiar cases when you are seeing a case uh, very rarely like a writer's cramp in your clinic try to document that and uh, try to ask questions from that or when you see a patient behaving in a different way example recently two months uh, before the uh, lockdown we had a certain group of people coming typical ankle pain and they also had knee pain later on subsequently so they all were suffering with this pain and whatever treatment modality i tried on them uh, manual therapy uh, nothing worked out on them all of them on an average basis came to clinic for 7 to 8 days and without much success they all stopped coming because they didn't have much recovery so i doubted my own skills and uh, when i was questioning myself where was this wrong uh, when i had sequence of patients coming with similar attitude i did a survey and i came out that there is one uh, all of them had a uh, fever two or three months before an episode of fever which is characterized by three days the first day there will be onset of fever the second day the fever would have peaked and the third day the fever vanished following this one month one week later these people also started getting pain from the ankle specifically and which progressively went into the knee joint and when i asked the local corporation they said yes that area is declared as endemic for certain uh, viral infection which is not identified as of yet so this is a very important uh, thing you have to analyze or uh, the behavior of the patients the peculiar behavior of patients then you will get a lot of research question reading newspapers will also give you a lot of uh, questions because now in this covid scenario you are uh, seeing the behavior of all the other countries in tackling covid and you are raising a lot of questions why can't india why this uh, specific thing is there in india so newspapers will bring about the global scenario and you can correlate your current scenario with global scenario so the first step as i told you is coming up with the research question uh, this research uh, research uh, problem because i see lot of young physiotherapist asking their guides sir can you please give me a topic and research ask research, the uh, guides asking the students have you uh, confirmed with your study topic i cannot give you topic you have to go behind topic please my dear uh, teachers tell them where the research uh, problems are available they'll definitely come up with the research problem so once you are once you get this research problem next you have the problem might be vague and it may be bizarre so you have to put it in a technical term and that is called as 
research question. So when I say research question, you have to um, come up with a PICO model. So I have got a research question here. Um, the research problem is, will virtual reality training improve hand function better than functional training among stroke patients? Okay, so this is my problem. I'm seeing virtual reality for the first time and the person who is marketing that is telling me that this is going to help in stroke patients hand function. But I really doubt it. So I want to do a analysis on this. This is how we start. So before going into the analysis, what I should know, I should know everything about stroke. And what is the disability which is resulting because of stroke? And what are all the current therapy which are available for stroke? And very importantly, I should know what is virtual reality is all about and what are the technicality of virtual reality. If only I have this cognitive idea about all these four contents, I can move forwards to next step. I'll form a PICO model question. So what is PICO? P for population. That is the patients whom we are dealing with. I is the intervention for which we are going to find the efficacy. And C is very important, the comparison, the control group with which you are going to compare your uh, intervention and say that is superior because normally we see in physiotherapy research, we don't give much consideration for this C, that is the comparing group. We always say control group, conventional physiotherapy was given. This is what we always say, right? But that is not true. You have to compare your son with a, a studious guy and say my son is studious than everybody. You cannot compare your son with a, a person who is very mediocre or who is failing frequently and say, my son is better than this guy. So whatever in intervention you are going to try to prove effective should be compared with a in par thing or whichever is in practice right now. Then only you can say, my treatment is right on top of the world. Okay. And then O stands for the outcome. What outcome you're seeing. So in our current uh, example, we'll see what we are doing. The P is our population is stroke population. We are going to take them. The intervention we are going to try is the virtual reality. The comparing group is the task specific exercise because that is a, which is proved very effective right now, which has a strong evidence for uh, hand rehabilitation of stroke patient. And what outcome we are seeing out of all the problems in stroke, we are seeing only the hand function problems. I think I'm making sense. Uh, with this at this point of time, I would like to summarize what I'm trying to tell in this presentation because many people have joined recently. Practicing evidence-based physiotherapy is not going to be possible unless otherwise we do some preparatory things. It is not going to happen within a matter of months or a group of people shouting for uh, uh, evidence-based practice to be adopted and a group of people just supporting them. This is a global scenario. Not only the physiotherapist, everybody should be educated about this thing. First of all, the physiotherapist should have a clear idea about their basics, statistics, and should have the intent to change and they should uh, devote a lot of time in practicing evidence. And when I say evidence-based practice, it is nothing but using the available research in helping the decision-making process in assessment to treatment and treatment to prognosis of the patients. So simple. Okay, so uh, where will be the research problems available? That we have seen. So research problem is the one. First of all, you should have a problem. You should have a problem, then only you will go and search for answer for this problem. If you don't have a problem at all, then there is no research and there is no need for evidence-based practice. So where are the problems available? We have seen. So what are the uh, problems um, uh, we, have, we have taken? For that problem, what we have to do is we have to form a systematic question that is called as a research question. And the third step for that is finding the best available evidence for this thing. So this question might be already answered. Somebody else might have done a study uh, one or two years before about the importance of uh, virtual reality in hand management in stroke. If I'm going to duplicate this research, then there is no point. I'm wasting my time. I'm duplicating the study results. So first, what I will do, I'll go to the research body and I will search whether I have already answered for this valid question. Okay, so where I will go, I will go into areas uh, like uh, the uh, PubMed. Medline, Chinhal, or all these things which gives you a primary source of research. 
and i will go into uh, secondary sources like uh, the pedro uh, physiopedia all these areas national guidelines has also give you some evidences so in these areas also i will go and search for whether i find the answer for this particular research problem and i would like to tell you using mesh terminologies is a very important thing i'll tell you later on how to use mesh terminologies when you are searching for evidences okay so if i find the answer already uh, uh, i find some studies which states that virtual reality is very effective in managing the hand function location i go i step i'm going to validate how this research work is worth or all the internet and all that is there in the literature are not valid there are a lot of research which are just duplicated ideas or fabricated ideas only ideas which are reliable and which are really done and tested that is if you have knowledge to validate somebody's research well and good you can do you even if you don't have any research in your name you can validate that okay so for that you should know the levels of evidence so when i say uh, somebody has done already about virtual reality i'll see whether it is a meta analysis or systematic review so they have the highest evidence this is the hierarchy uh, don't see the volume of the boxes see which sits on top of it uh, please you can unmute your uh, you can mute your audio all of the participants yeah so if you see the meta analysis and systematic review they are sitting comfortably right on top because they have the highest evidence what is a meta analysis it is a summary of a similar type of researches which are done with a similar topic and they are going to analyze the results uh, secondary data analysis and going to produce a meta analysis systematic review is they are not going to give an idea about the data but they are going to give the ideas only the ideas they are going to uh, cumulatively present so these two things are the very important uh, evidence followed by a randomized control trial okay not a quasi experimental study it is a randomized control trial which stands third on that then the cohort studies case control studies case series and finally you will have some animal models and experience of the uh, studies which are done out of experience so in the hierarchy you see the experience and theoretical frame comes very least it is not on top so um, some areas uh, there are a lot of uh, mis misunderstanding or there are a lot of uh, controversy in uh, grading these things i normally adopt oxford center of evidence based medicine which is published in 2009 where it has graded the uh, systematic review as 1a individual rcts into 1b and the homogeneity and heterogeneity are for beyond the scope of this class so i just leave it to uh, for the audience to do a homework on all these things what is homogeneity and heterogeneity okay so i adopt this and i can uh, tell you if you have something else uh, you can also adopt that but adopt some sort of uh, levels of evidence to be followed based upon the levels of evidence you can grade your evidences upon a b c d and e so if i want to say this particular intervention has a strong evidence there should be a good amount of level 1 evidence for that or one level of evidence one and Uh, some study which has level two evidence. If I want to say this has a moderate evidence, then there should be a single high quality randomized control trial, or a good amount of level two studies. Weak evidence means you should have single uh, cohort study which is presented on this topic, and three or four uh, some good amount of three four level studies. So when I say one two three, where it comes from? It comes from the previous slides level levels of evidence. So from here it comes one two three. okay so most of our physiotherapy modalities uh, have conflicting evidence or very weak evidence that is where the problem comes so many of the studies have disproved that uh, our modalities like uh, eft or short wave diathermy or traction do not have a much superior result compared to a placebo controlled trial so that is when the problem comes if you see most of the equipments which are being introduced are which are in existence proved to be conflicting evidence are pertaining to pain and new equipments also coming up only because of pain because pain can be attested from various degrees 
it has a lot of confounding variables. So uh, to prove some intervention very effective in pain management is very tough. If you know uh, the evidence which is available for osteoarthritis management, the first level of evidence is for weight reduction. Weight reduction has the highest evidence, strongest evidence for reducing pain. And the second thing is isotonic exercises. So none other than uh, these two have a good uh, effect on managing osteoarthritis of patients. But still we treat osteoarthritis patients in our clinic uh, days together, months together. Okay, so uh, this is all about categorizing your uh, found research. You have found some research and categorize in that. Now I will advise all the attendants uh, to go and now start collecting information about all and advanced physiotherapy modalities in this format. Analyze which has evidence and which do not have evidence. Then the fifth stage is integrate the evidence with your experience and the patient values. If my patient says one particular intervention is very painful, I'm not able to go with that. I'm not able to do that exercise what you're telling me. Please don't give them. That is influencing the patient cognitively. That is not going to give you some results. Okay, if you have some uh, interventions which in your experience previously had the pain and the patient has landed in some trouble, don't use it. The, uh, it is not that you have evidence and you have to apply that on your patients. You may not be expertise in using that particular evidence. That is another thing. So uh, after you come across all these evidences, you have to integrate that with your experience and the patient values and apply that on your patients first. Okay, once you apply that on a consistent basis, you are going to audit. The last step is very important. You're going to audit the result. If you are not going to audit the result, audit the result means you're going to find the outcome measures whether the patient is recovering faster or better. Okay, if any of these two things happens, I'm well and good, I'm ready to change my uh, approach towards this condition. I'm ready to adopt uh, visual, virtual reality. The treatment should bring about a much faster relief of uh, symptoms and much effective way of relieving the symptoms. These two things are very important. Okay, so uh, to be on the nutshell, again, I will uh, uh, like to uh, put it in a, uh, uh, initially we saw that it is a step-by-step -step process. Actually, it is not a step-by-step -step process. It is a process which has a cyclic uh, thing. Now, where to start from as a physiotherapist, where you can start from? Ask answerable research questions. Okay, from here you have to ask. From your current practice, start asking questions on how, what, where, when. Then you can come up with some evidence. You, have, you can go and search in the internet for the evidence in the areas for previous researches. And then you can design for change in practice. You can come to a conclusion whether I need a change in my practice or whatever I'm adopting is already proved correct. Then you have to implement that on your patients. Not only reading is sufficient, you have to implement on your patients. And then you have to evaluate how the results are positive or negative, better than before, or assess the need for change in practice. Based upon the results only you should you need a change in practice or not. Then if you need a change in practice, then adopt it. It's a cyclic process. You should keep asking this question time and again. Okay, so uh, I think now you can understand why initially I said this is not going to happen in one or two days. Okay, so uh, if uh, if the moderator says that uh, if, if the uh, uh, if the organizer says you have some time, we can go with an example of finding evidence for one particular approach. Sandeep uh, sir, do we have time? Uh, Arunachalam, actually... Rajan like, sir, you decide. Yes sir. Yeah, Arunachalam, like how much time will it take? Sir, uh, another five minutes. Yeah, no problem. Okay, then yeah. I think we can do that. Yes, sir. yes. Okay. So now um, uh, all of you are very familiar with cupping therapy. Many of you have studied cupping therapy. And I would like to tell you whether the cupping therapy has evidence or not. So what we do normally is we go to the uh, search engine. We normally have this PubMed, right? So in PubMed, you directly go and search things. But I would like you to come down and click onto this mesh database. Okay, so once the mesh database is open, you can type cupping. Okay, just type cupping and search. 
I think you are able to see my screen, sir. Yeah. Yeah, so, we are able to see. Yeah, the first thing that comes is cupping therapy because that is what we are relevantly searching. There are some other uh, options also, but this is what we are trying to search. So why I am asking you to go into mesh terminologies and searches? This cupping therapy can be uh, recorded in previous research as many things like therapy cupping, cupping treatment, cupping treatments, treatment cupping. So uh, once you search in the mesh terminology, it is going to give you a cumulative answer of all these terminologies which are used. So now what I am going to see is first thing I'm worried about before the therapeutic effects I want to know what is the adverse effects of this thing so when I click here it adds a search builder okay now I'm going to search the PubMed so once I search PubMed I'll get a lot of articles but I'm going to search only for meta-analysis because that is the right on top of it you see there is no meta-analysis done on adverse reactions of cupping therapy and then there is no you see systematic reviews are there no systematic reviews are there any randomized control trials no randomized control trials are available so again okay, i'll go back and i will see whether uh, there are any other articles related to uh, management of it that is therapeutic use or pharmaco uh, pharmacotherapy methods statistics i'll click all these boxes and see what is at, le at least available uh, in this thing mm -hmm. okay i'm building a search builder here after search building, you are going to search for the results. See, I've got some results here. Again, I'm going to see uh, whether there is any meta analysis done on this. To my surprise, there is no meta analysis already being done, done on coupling therapy. And is there any systematic review? No systematic reviews. Is there any randomized control trials? Yes, there are two randomized control trials. Um, one is wet cupping. Another one is non-pharmacological and pharmacological interventions related insomnia. Insomnia, I'm not worried about. I'm going with this particular thing because it is pertaining to low back pain. I'll see this article. This was published in uh, 2019, so it is very recent. But where it was published, it was published in acupuncture uh, medical system. That is, uh, uh, what are the authors are all about? The authors are all from the uh, uh, alternative medicine and none of them are physiotherapists. Uh, would you rate this article as effective or not? That is a question. So what uh, the study says that the study did not show the study did not show superior for one technique compared with the other long term follow up period of program is required cupping session may be needed to evaluate the differences. So what I'm trying to say is this particular uh, cupping therapy will not have any evidence. It is very visible from PubMed. You can also search like this in Chinal, Medline, Cochrane database and you can come to an idea whether I have to use this cupping therapy or not. So this is can go behind research and find out the answers so with this uh, I'll come to a conclusion and uh, so practicing evidence-based practice is possible or not possible it is like a maze you have to decide on your own the same questions what I asked you in the previous class uh, most of them said that lack of learning habits is major problem or the major barrier in um, the uh, evidence-based practice after my session got completed they said the lack of intent to change is a major problem sir it is not the lack of habits uh, we have to change our intention and a question physiotherapy should practice first therapeutic experience is very important and then later on they said the research evidence is more important so just I'm giving you an idea about what is the perception of physiotherapist uh, around the India um, in approaching the evidence-based practice hope I've given you some homeworks to do please do that and also give me a feedback about uh, what do you feel because uh, we are uh, currently doing in uh, research in uh, gosoapbox.com we have this presentation so just the feedback we'll also consider that and we perception of physiotherapist in evidence practice so that I can present even better in my subsequent classes Thank you so much for uh, South Zone IAP for giving me the opportunity. This session is open for discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Arunachalam. And uh, now I, uh, it was a wonderful presentation and I think uh, all the uh, participants would have been definitely benefited. And uh, I should say like uh, myself as a participant was very much enlightened by your talk. And uh, 
thank you very much for that and now i request uh, dr parth trivedi to go through the chat box and if the participants have any questions you can please uh, 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 take it to dr arnachal uh, very good evening uh, to all uh, it was a very indeed uh, good presentation arnachalam sir uh, in an eye opening for all all the researchers and all the uh, young buddies who can uh, discuss so there is one question uh, from anita prem uh, she has mentioned that as indian researchers and physios how many of us follow the evidence based practice of the researches done in our country so this is what first question of her says yeah uh, as you, uh, the second part of questions is what the reason for our research not in pa international research yes um, it's a uh, statement that access that we are lacking behind the research um, because this evidence practice originated from uh, abroad initially it, it came for the medicine 1972 they wanted to have evidence based medicine where very less but in our uh, the margin of error is uh, Uh, we have a lot of uh, luxury in handling patients with margin of error high margin of error because we are not dealing with life or not but yet uh, this um, practice of research into field of physiotherapy later radiated from the medical field and um, we always as an indian system of medics medicine we had uh, our uh, the system of indian medicine is something different we did not uh, Uh, needed evidence to practice we have beliefs to practice we had a, a hypothesis devised by our ancestors to practice like indian system of medicine but when we are adopting foreign system of medicine that is western system of medicine definitely there will be the forerunners in everything yeah, for, right from the drug invention to the uh, researches now we are catching in par with them but in those days it is entirely different if you see the knowledge about uh, the evidence based practice has come now only in india the last decade or so we are talking about evidence based practice if you see the management of uh, tone and uh, spasticity management has been uh, disproved uh, it is proved wrong that it is there is no point in uh, going behind tone in uh, 1998 itself when karen shepherd educated and she came up with the idea but i and many of us were been taught about boba technique uh, uh, tone assessment and management of tone all these things because the uh, uh, globalization of ideas and research communication is what is lacking we are not uh, catching up with the research communication one thing another thing is our system of education has to be blamed you say the reason for the uh, poor research system is you ask us a bd student to do a research how far he will be uh, uh if you ask me and ask most of the people who practice evidence based they will uh, say that undergraduate should not have research instead teach them how to critically analyze the research uh, teach them how to uh, comment on already published articles what are the things should be there in an article how to critically appraise an article so all these things you can teach but asking them to the research is it's keeping a big coconut on a, a bird's head graduates should have some uh, observational research rather than an interventional research only at the level of phd you should have interventional research or clinical level you can have interventional research so that it will give you a real picture what is the need for which uh, you are going for a research if it is for completing a course then obviously you are going to do everything for name sake if it is for individual credibility then you will definitely do a good research so that is why we have a poor uh, system of uh, research and uh, the, the reporting system is also very poor uh, globally people don't take indian research very seriously that is the major reason but we are catching up with that man we are lacking very badly in fund the important thing we are lacking badly in funding and the universities are not funding physiotherapy research and uh, recently i heard from uh, um, the uh, iap president that they are going to fund for the researchers and that if that happens then that is wonderful for the profession uh, so for a very wonderful uh, answer to the question second question is from lakshmi prabha uh, she wants to learn again in how to search and pubmed so if you can uh, briefly revise that uh, yeah uh, 
madam you have uh, for everything you have some mesh terminologies what is meant by mesh terminology is like if you have low back pain if you go and search exercise for low back pain uh, you can get only articles which are done on low back pain because this name has a lot of synonyms. You have lumbago, you have uh, mechanical low back pain, non-specific low back pain. All these things are there. So I ask you to go and search for uh, mesh terminologies. So I just type low back pain. You see how many mesh terminologies are there for, uh, how many terminologies there under this mesh term. Uh, see, you have back pain, low, low back pains, lumbago, so all these things. See, if a researcher has done on low back ache, he has termed that condition as low back ache and he has published and you are searching as lumbago, then you may you may miss out on this particular uh, research what he has done because the terminology differs because you are searching in a uh, ocean. So you should be very clear. So put this mesh terminology and search and whatever you want, you can see here. Uh, you want to see rehabilitation, you can select and uh, you can just go and build your uh, uh, see here you can have low back pain bar rehabilitation mesh terminology so you can search the pubmed the pubmed uh, the older version of pubmed had given you a lot of uh, things like uh, the uh, boolean searches now it has become very easy for you to search uh, i just want to uh, tell you this thing Yes, this one. Um, you might have seen uh, these terminologies, right? Uh, how to search with capital and or not. We are called as the Boolean uh, search operations and truncations, which we use using a hash switch and bracket. Now, these are all given way for a mid uh, portal, which has made your search very easy. Only thing is you have to build very fab, uh, very easily they have made it. So searching in a PubMed is a big art. Uh, uh, you can go into uh, YouTube for all these things. Everything is available in YouTube. Yes, sir. Next question, sir. Uh, third question is from Dr. Abdul Basit Rehman. Are we following evidence-based practice or practice-based evidence in India? Mm, actually, it is individualized. Uh, you cannot say uh, how they are practicing because it needs to. This is what you are asking me a question. I cannot answer from my own. I, ha I need some evidence to answer for this. That is called as evidence-based practice. If I say that I have conducted a survey 10 months back or one month back, I have come out with an answer saying that physiotherapist, all of them, most of them are practicing uh, practice-based evidence or uh, evidence-based practice, then I am practicing evidence. If I tell it from my mouth or uh, um, day before yesterday, Rajan sir told me this thing, so I am telling you this thing, that means that is not evidence. So this answer itself needs evidence based to answer you. Um, I can say on an um, on a what from my observation point of view, I can say qualitatively that most of us do not practice evidence based medicine, uh, evidence based physiotherapy, because of the practicality what we have uh, discussed in this presentation. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. The next question is from Dr. Kalpana. Uh, so, what is your opinion about uh, still keeping the values along with the evidence in the country like India. So values in the sense what? Values of treatment? I think she has just dropped down a message. First step in MVP is that we will deliver practice based evidence. So that's what she means to say. Any, that's what uh, I'm saying. You have to take uh, the practice and the expertise. Values. Patients yes. and therapists then. Yes, you have to take uh, uh, values of the patients as well as therapists. That's why I never told that evidence plays 70% role, uh, expertise plays 15% role, and uh, people, uh, uh, patients' idea plays 15% role. I have never given you any percentage. It's based upon individual areas. That is why decision making is very important. I gave you an example of an athlete where the physiotherapist have to give 100% importance to the therapist, uh, the, the patient's uh, uh, mentality to give a strap. Okay, so they don't have any percentage of uh, uh, weightage. It's based upon the therapist to take a call. That's why I say it is the how you integrate all the three and come up with the best for your patients. Uh, moving on towards the next question, uh, it's from Dr. C.S. Ram. 
He has actually two questions. One is, as per your knowledge, which physiotherapy modalities have high level of evidence? And to continuation is, uh, is there any evidence for manipulation? <laughs> Uh, see, uh, again, if you ask me what is my evidence for manipulation, you have a lot of manipulations, a lot of, a lot of school of thoughts in uh, manipulation. I cannot generalizely say that uh, this particular has evidence and this has do not have evidence. I practice Maitland for uh, back pain management. I practice Mulligan for uh, neck pain management. And uh, for peripheral manipulation, I always use Mulligan's uh, technique. So likewise, if you see, uh, it is based upon the experience where you produce results. If you are very expertised in using Maitland for low back pain, then that's good. You can use Maitland for uh, low back pain. Uh, but the thing is, it is up to the physiotherapist to go for a, status, a strategical analysis of uh, his research question. See, now you've got a question. You can go to the net and search instead of asking a person. If I tell you that, uh, okay, McKenzie is very effective, then you will have this idea this McKenzie is effective. I'll go and practice McKenzie. This is not evidence-based practice. You going into the internet and you going and searching for the research and systematically answering your question is the way that should be followed. Please don't ask anybody whether this is effective or not because it is up to you to do a uh, analysis. If I'm marketing an uh, approach, for example, if I'm coming up with a new approach and telling you that this is eff effective, then I am subjected to prove that that is effective by means of giving you physiology and the research evidence for that. Even then it is up to you to go and cross verify and say whether it is true or not, because I am self-centered. I may say my equipment is very effective because I'm marketing it. I have a conflict of interest in that. So, you have to keep, you have to be very aware about your surroundings. What is happening to your patients and yourself? Uh, moving on towards the next question. It is from the Akshar Physio Academy. Most of the Indian research base is on mother articles. Does it mean it is copy or reputation of work? Means it is copy. See, mother article, uh, I told you the source of uh, research problem is one is research article. It is not that every research should have a mother article. Uh, my study, which was uh, done for a PhD, was designing an equipment. Do not have an article. This word, this association was coined by somebody uh, called Bath. He, he uh, designed this name, trunk dissociation, body dissociation, body path dissociation. I took that as an inspiration. I wanted to design an equipment for trunk dissociation and I came up with that idea. I don't have a mother article. But uh, when you study an article and you come up with some ideas, you, your study is somewhat related to that mother article, uh, that is a research article, then you can call it as your mother article. But uh, it is always a myth saying that every study should have a mother article. Hope I have answered this question. Uh, moving on towards the next question is from Dr. Anup Singh. Uh, what, so what was your guidance you will give to the students who are in DPT first year as they are facing the tough academic. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, one information loud and clear, I would tell you that IAP is coming with a lot of uh, rectification in the curriculum. The uh, first step is already sold and we had already discussed how to make it very easy for the because right now you are studying anatomy in first year, second year studying about uh, bio third year pathomechanics, fourth year you are studying about physiotherapy uh, interventions. It is very tough for you to integrate everything all together. So the curriculum has to be changed like you integrate each and everything in then and there so that you have good comprehension. Uh, that is called as vertical integration of uh, subjects. So slowly all the universities will start adopting uh, the guidelines which is going to be given by IAP. So uh, um, as uh, elderly people, uh, we are all envying you people because you are you are going to have a very good platform to read, and you have a you will have a good vision about physiotherapy in future. And uh, most probably, you will not be having the load of uh, doing the uh, uh, in the name of. You may do some study, not research, in future. That is what I see from all the uh, developments that is happening in IAP. Uh -huh. Sir, I think uh, we will uh, stop with this because I think yes, uh, it's getting too late. I think maybe yes, we can ask the participants still if they have any doubts, uh, you can uh, 
still contact us. We'll be able to uh, uh, get connected with uh, Arunachalam and probably yes. we'll be able to get you uh, yes, uh, the answers. And uh, I, I thank Arunachalam for the wonderful work. I really thank uh, Dr. Parth Trivedi for uh, wonderful moderation, what you have done, sir. And uh, definitely it was uh, a useful presentation. And uh, I take this opportunity to thank the Central IAP uh, for giving us uh, the encouragement and motivation. And uh, especially the speaker uh, for spending real time. And uh, we can see the commitment, like uh, we can see that now he really uh, has an intention to create a change in the uh, Indian environment. Okay, so mm -hmm. maybe like when he talks, he, he uh, we can see that uh, what is the longingness for him to make the change. So that is really uh, appreciable, and uh, we definitely hope uh, things will change. And uh, uh, we have uh, good researchers coming up, and uh, all the countries will uh, look up to Indian researchers. Uh, that India has come up with so much uh, good research and uh, thank you for the wonderful moderation sir I sincerely thank our chief guest uh, uh, so she had stayed with us for the whole program uh, as yes, a participant. Madam. and uh, no that that shows the inspiration like you no know, we say like uh, like uh, yeah older people now even older people are ready to learn they, they just want sir. to uh, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, there are participants from US also, sir. Kalpana, they are all from US. There are participants from abroad. Yeah, participants from abroad. And you see, like, you know, that is the spirit. Like, uh, we have, you no, know, there is no uh, end for learning. And uh, as Arnachalam was telling, like, uh, at least you have to read one article in a week. Okay. So, updating yourself uh, is, uh, you, you have to read the newspaper daily. You cannot say that yesterday I have seen the newspaper, so I don't need to look into the newspaper today because newspaper has to be read uh, daily. Likewise, your updation also has to happen uh, because you cannot say like I, I studied Clayton electrotherapy, so I follow Clayton electrotherapy all, all your lifetime. So I think like everybody is learning and uh, more, more we learn, more we uh, become good teachers. So I think uh, it was a wonderful session. I thank uh, the technical people, uh, IAPWC, uh, Madam uh, Sumita, Madam Shanti, and also Richa Singh, Madam, for their continuous support. I thank my colleagues, I, uh, IAP South Zone, and our uh, CK Sindhil sir, uh, all the participants who have been part of this uh, program. It was really a wonderful session. And uh, tomorrow we are having a uh, session on the uh, basics of aquatic therapy. So that will be uh, held uh, between four to five tomorrow. And that is again open for all these students. So I think like uh, it is definitely going to be a very interesting uh, area, like uh, newly coming up. So I request all of you to see you there. And thank you very much for all your cooperation and making this a wonderful and useful day. Thank you all. Thank you for the opportunity to share on this platform. Thank you, Dr. Yes, Arunachalam, for that very uh, thought-provoking presentation. You have touched a card somewhere for all of us to rethink on our practices. Thank you, entire South Zone. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Partha, sir. Thank you, Arunachalam, sir. Thank you all. See you all in a different platform. Thank you very much. Sumitra, Madam, thank that. you so much. Rishi, Madam, thank you. Thank you all the participants. Yeah. Madam Richa, Madam, you can now end the... Okay. Sure. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you. Rajan, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, the Kalpana is US in the US, sir. Yeah, I, sir, I saw Sam Lazarus, sir, also. He is there. Okay. He had come, sir. Uh, it is nice, sir. It's nice that we have and many, many uh, US, Australia, everybody. It's nice to see that people are participating all over. Yes, sir. Around the globe. And again, the tomorrow the speaker for the uh, aquatic therapy is going to be Dr. Uh, Sam Lazarus. He is uh, talking to us from Australia. Rajan sir, Rajan sir, just inform that it is available on the YouTube. I, I have the YouTube, it is available. 
yeah the presentation is available in the uh, iap platform in youtube we will also be circulating the youtube link so you can always uh, go and see for this presentation and also all our previous webinars and uh, even the tomorrow webinar is again going to be youtube youtube live so some people who cannot join zoom uh, may also uh, see it, uh, live in youtube thank you thank you all thank you sir thank, thank you, you sir. so much sir thank you ck sendil sir thank you supriya ma'am thank, thank you, you thank you bye god bless you thank, thank you rajan you sir thank you stay safe all the time thank, thank you everyone thank you thank you mm -hmm.